Please find me something. Christopher! Christopher, breakfast! The pencil's writing again, Daddy. Try to be sensible. What's it say? It says a few hundred pounds. Now, please be careful, will you? Yes. Mr. Nicholas Gordon. Yes, speaking. Managing director of the Sovereign Bank. Yes, who is this? For the purpose of this and subsequent conversations, my name is Juggernaut. I am ringing you about your ship, the Britannic. Yes, what about her? Seven explosive devices, 7,000 pounds of hammer tile, have been placed aboard your vessel. If she holds her present position, shortly after dawn tomorrow, Britannic's time, she will blow up. <laughs> the time is 9.16. Exactly six minutes ago, my devices were automatically armed by clockwork mechanism. They are now live, active, and waiting for the dawn. It follows that I have the information render the bombs harmless. I will give you this information, Mr. Porter, for the very modest sum of 500,000 pounds. I do not wish to see anybody harmed, Mr. Porter. Any loss of life resulting from your company's refusal to cooperate will be your responsibility and yours alone. No doubt you will instruct your captain to make an immediate search for my devices. He will find seven steel drums, 50 gallon drums, painted green with a yellow band near the top. Once they are located, no attempt should be made to move them. If the position of any drum is altered, it will explode instantaneously. Any attempt to dismantle any of the devices will have the same result. An immediate explosion. The devices are booby-trapped in various ways. I need hardly add that I would not have embarked on an enterprise of this kind if I were not totally confident of my own expertise in these matters. I realize you will have to discuss this matter with your fellow directors and with the appropriate authorities. You will hear from me from Juggernaut within two hours. I will then give you precise instructions about the payment of the 500,000 pounds. To demonstrate my skill and sincerity, I have arranged a small demonstration which should occur as I am speaking to you. I trust this will cause no serious personal injury. Thank you. Juggernaut's bomb is a so-called demonstration bomb. Exploded 20 minutes ago on board. Damage? Minor. Anyone hurt? One injury. You said dawn tomorrow. What time is that? Well, she's sailing a minimum speed pattern. That's near 35 degrees west, plus two time zones. Her dawn will come at 10 minutes past six. That's past 10 past six. eight. Huh? Uh, which gives us just under 22 hours to find your... Juggernaut. Is it possible? <coughs> well, I know that at ten past eight tomorrow. Now, what we are doing is we're going to set up a special operations centre. Um, there's no shortage of manpower. It's time is the problem. Uh, we've got our telephone trace organised for when he calls again, if he calls. And we've gone through our list of possible suspects. That is all the boys who understand big bangs. Because I lay odds. Our friend Linda's trade in the armed forces. All right, good.
can only be an assumption at the moment. However, here is our list. I've arranged for the War Office to supply you with their radical list. Arabs, Irish, anarchists. Pardon? An explosives ordnance disposal team under Lieutenant Commander Anthony Fallon will be on its way to the Britannic in just a few minutes' time. They are under orders to immediately defuse Juggernaut's devices. Well, may I say for the Sovereign Line how much we appreciate the efficiency and urgency that has been shown by the services and by the police. My wife and two kids are on the Britannia. Uh, before we move on, I wonder, Mr. Porto, will you please clarify your company's intentions in this matter? Intention? Your course of action. We intend to wait for Juggernaut's call, note his instructions and pay the ransom. No. What would you suggest? Not paying the ransom. We are well aware of the risks, Mr. Porto, but it is the view of Her Majesty's government, the view, the policy, the determination to resist extortion by terror. Now, it isn't a hasty decision. It's the result of a long series of similar situations, both at home and abroad. It's a simple question of responsibility. Responsibility to ourselves and to other governments. Responsibility to 1,200 people aboard my ship. That's my responsibility. I take the point, but we can't consider this case in isolation. Well, if you take a broad enough view, you can justify anything. Let us examine the broad view. Sovereign Line, a firm that has received substantial government subsidies and a £20 million loan. Do you buy my conscience with a subsidy? No, but we have the right to your understanding. And if we proceed regardless and pay the ransom? That's your right in a free democracy. To coin a phrase. The armed forces are, of course, obliged to conform to government policy. No opinion. Yes. Mr. Nicholas Porter. Speaking. Managing Director of the Sovereign Line. Juggernaut. How are things aboard your ship? There's been an explosion. Oh, hardly that, Mr. Porter. Not what I call a real explosion. I've seen real explosions, Mr. Porter. They destroy people. It's very important that you understand one thing. The ship has encountered very bad weather. Gales, very heavy seas. There is no way that the passengers can be taken off. Blue Boy Trace, Blue Boy Trace. 50 Grosvenor Street, registered House of Worth, Fashion House. Three blocks. Blue Force respond. Too bloody near. How do we defuse the bombs? Here are your instructions. At the lost and found counter of Waterloo Station, you will ask for two matched blood suitcases. Bearing the initials DJS. In one of the cases, you will find a brown wind cheater. In its pocket, a key to locker number 93 at the West London Air Terminal. These suitcases, and only these, are to be packed with £20 notes. The sum will be exactly £500,000. The serial numbers on the notes will be random. Someone, not me of course, will collect the cases from the air terminal luggage locker. If any attempt is made to follow him, you will not hear from me again, and your ship will sink. I said, too bloody near. Crafty sod, two lines, one feeding in, other feeding out. 